Some years ago, I had the good fortune of being at the site where the ascension occurred in Jerusalem. I was leading a pilgrimage to the Holy Land, and we were at the site, which is on the side of the Mount of Olives, where Jesus suffered uh, his uh, agony in the garden. And he ascended in an area of the garden, which is just down below the Garden of Gethsemane, the Garden of Olives. And there is, there at that site are the ruins of an ancient church which was destroyed during the Crusades. And the only thing left is just a few uh, rubble heaps of rock and a small chapel. In the small chapel, no bigger than the sacristy, very tiny, uh, there are there's a stone pavement. And in the stone pavement, there are footprints. And tradition has it that when, before Jesus ascended into heaven, he left footprints in the stone. And you can see they look like human footprints. And if you have uh, uh, the clout with the tour guide, you can put your feet in those footprints. I did. And they fit. <laughs> but what does it mean that my feet fit the footprints of Jesus? In fact, all of our feet fit the foot size of Jesus, the footprints of Jesus, because we're all called to follow in his footsteps. Every Christian's duty and responsibility is to be what I call an agent of God, an agent of God. An agent is one who works for someone else. We're called upon to be agents of God, to serve him and to work for him in the world, to bring his message to a world that is desperately in need of the message of the gospel, to bring the message of Jesus to be agents of God within our families, to bring the message of God to our families, to be an agent of God at work, at school, wherever we find ourselves, not carrying a placard saying, I'm an agent of God. But by acting like an agent of God, acting like a disciple, bringing the message of Jesus to others by how we live. Someone said, I think it was St. Francis of Assisi, preach the gospel only if necessary, use words. Preach the gospel only if necessary, use words. In other words, let, your, let my life and your life be a, an unspoken gospel. Let everything about us speak about Jesus Christ. What we do or what we don't do, how we live or how we don't live, what our values are and what our values aren't. This, of course, is Mother's Day, and we think about motherhood as, as a sign of God's love. In this gospel, it talks about rec receiving power, the power of the Holy Spirit. We will be clothed in power. What is this power? This power is to be an agent of God. Every mother is an agent of God. Every mother has been empowered by the Holy Spirit to be an agent of God. And all of us together today on Mother's Day reflect upon what that looks like. In fact, the love of a mother, the kind of love that a mother bears for her children is the kind of love each of us that should have for every, every one of us, for each other. A mother sees his or her child, every mother sees her child through the eyes of God. Every mother, every godly mother tries to bring the best out of her children. Every godly mother is an agent of God trying to help a child become the best version of himself or the best version of herself as God has designed her and planned for her to be. The story told which gives a beautiful description of this kind of love, the story of a young boy by the name of Teddy Stoddard. It's a true story that I had printed up and put away and I found it the other day and it it's a beautiful story. It's one of my favorites. Teddy Stoddard, as a child, was a very poor student. He was one of the kids in school that oftentimes was looked down upon by others, other kids. He was the kind of kid that had an expressionless sort of, of unfocused stare. His teacher, Miss Thompson, would speak to him and he'd answer in one word. She couldn't draw him out. Other kids made fun of him, as I said, and even though the teacher would call upon him, he wouldn't answer, 
and she was completely flabbergasted and frustrated with him. And the teacher, she by her own admission, Miss Thompson would say when she graded her papers because of Teddy's behavior in the classroom, she took delight in putting red marks, you know, check marks on his paper, as sad as it is. She should have known better, the teacher, because she had his records. In the record, it showed that in first grade, Teddy Stoddard showed promise with his work and his aptitude, but he had poor home conditions. In second grade, Teddy Stoddard, it said Teddy Stoddard could do better. His mother is seriously ill, and he receives little help at home. Third grade, the record. Teddy is a good boy, but too serious. He is a slow learner, and his mother died this year. Fourth grade, Teddy is very slow, but well-behaved. His father shows no interest. So the story goes, Christmas time arrived and all the kids would bring presents for Miss Thompson. Teddy brought a gift too. It was wrapped in, news, in, uh, in a paper sack, old brown paper sack wrapped this gift, sloppily taped, and on it simply said, for Miss Thompson from Teddy. And she opened all the gifts uh, that the kids brought, and all the kids would ooh and ah. When she opened Teddy Stoddard's gift in the paper bag wrapping, Teddy's present fell out, and it was a gaudy rhinestone bracelet with half the stones missing and a bottle of cheap perfume. The boys and girls began to giggle and smirk over Teddy's gifts, but Miss Thompson had enough sense to sign us the kids. She put on the bracelet and put on some of the perfume and she held it up. She said, look, children, and smell the beautiful perfume. And the kids responded with their oohs and ahs. At the end of the day, Teddy Stoddard lingered behind and went up to Miss Thompson and said, Miss Thompson, you smell just like my mother. And her bracelet looks really good on you, too. I'm glad you like my presence. When Teddy left the classroom, Miss Thompson fell to her knees and asked God to forgive her. The next day when the children came to school, they were welcomed by a change to Miss Thompson. She was no longer just a teacher. She had become an agent of God because she was now committed to loving each child as unique and doing things for them that would long, live on after her. She helped all the children, but especially the slow ones, and especially Teddy. By the end of the school year, Teddy showed dramatic improvement. He had caught up with most of the students and even excelled beyond some. And then she didn't hear from him for many years. Then one day she received a note that read, Miss Thompson, I wanted you to know that I will be graduating second in my class. Love, Teddy Stoddard. Four years later, another note. Miss Thompson, they just told me I will be graduating first in my class. I wanted you to be the first to know the university has not been easy, but I liked it. Love, Teddy Stoddard. Four years later, dear Miss Thompson, as of today, I am Th Theodore Stoddard, MD. How about that? I wanted you to be the first to know I'm getting buried, married next week, rather next month, the 27th, to be exact. I want you to come and sit where my mother would have sat if she were alive. You are the only family I have now. Dad died last year. Love, Teddy Stoddard. Miss Thompson went to the wedding and sat where Teddy's mother would have sat, and she deserved to sit there because she had done something for Teddy that he would never forget. She had been an agent of God. And so also we're all called to imitate that, that kind of love, to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. That's what ascension is all about. It's not that Jesus ascends into heaven and say, goodbye now, see you when I die. No. 
He ascended into heaven and then sent his Holy Spirit so that his Holy Spirit would empower us, would clothe us in his Spirit, fill us with his Holy Spirit so that we become agents of God. We do God's work. Empowered by God is what you and I are. Sometimes, if you're like me, we don't use the power. We get sidetracked into negativism and looking upon people with a negative eye, putting people down, being hypercritical. Not bringing the best out of people, but bringing the worst. Not looking at people through the eyes of God, through the eyeglasses of God, but looking down at people, the eyeglasses of this world. Today, we look to motherhood as, as an eloquent message to the world of what it means to be an agent of God. Mothers have such a precious part in our lives. We are dramatically impacted by our mothers. And well, it should be, because our mothers impact us with an understanding through their lives of what it means to love and what it means to be an agent of God. I stood in Christ's footsteps on the Mount of Gethsemane in Jerusalem, and yet we all stand in his footsteps. The question is this, while I stand in his footsteps, will I walk in his shoes? Will I go with him? Will I be like a good mother, an agent of God? Thank you. Thank you.